Presida, Director General Lilia de Lima, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Secretary Laila de Lima, Ombuds, the dynamic Ombudswoman Conchita Carpio Morales, Solicitor General Francis Ardelesa, Chairman Tong Payumo, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, who we assume will be praising us a lot the following days, Economic Zone Performance Awardees, friends from the business sector, members of the different foreign chambers of commerce present, fellow workers in government, Maminamal ko pong kababayan, magandang gabi po sa lahat. Good evening, everyone. I think it's, um, it will be no surprise if I say once again that my presence here is indicative that I am a member of the Lilia de Lima Fans Club. She really is such an institution and it will come as to no surprise that our research and development teams are seriously studying how to clone Lilia de Lima. If you noticed uh, earlier, there was a slide showing that uh, they have been doing so much and becoming a lean and really aggressive institution from over a thousand employees to, what was the number now, about 500 or so. And they are not expected just to attend to the concerns of the locators. They are supposed to be multi-talented. And I'm sorry, I will not be able to see the other talents that they possess, but I am assured everybody will be delighted. Okay. I hope nobody minds if I repeat some of the statistics that uh, our Director General stated earlier. Sometimes I feel the good news is not said enough, so tonight I will say them twice. In 2009, I began my campaign for the presidency with a simple but ambitious idea that we can end poverty if we eliminate corruption. Only 22 months after I took my oath as president, I am honored to say that our faith in this idea has been validated. Our country has undergone a profound change in almost every sector. We have restored the idea of public service and more importantly, accountability in governance. Investors have responded with renewed confidence in our country's prospects. And most importantly, our people have begun to believe that a better future definitely awaits them. Perhaps the only thing that has not been possible for us to change is, of course, the weather. To our foreign guests, rest assured that the warmth of my countrymen will definitely help you cope with the summer heat. I am here tonight to recognize, and we have recognized, the people whose work and faith have contributed greatly to the change we are experiencing right now. For 17 years, PESA has been at the front line of our efforts to attract and keep investors. It has always been an early indicator of the state of foreign direct investments in the Philippines. So I am glad to be here to extend my heartfelt congratulations and sincere appreciation for their good work. I am also here to highlight our entire nation's gratitude to those who believed in our potential, namely all our investors. I am told that since we have assumed office, PESA has generated a total of, and this is part of the statistics I want to repeat, 465 billion pesos in investments. Allow me to emphasize the magnitude of this figure. I'll have to repeat it a third time. 465 billion pesos. <clears throat> in, 20, in 17 years of PESA, this is, represents 23% of all investments generated by the authority. And may I say again, this has happened in a span of less than two years. Again, I extend my congratulations to Director General Lilia de Lima, who has raised this institution as if it were her own child. That child is moving forward from its formative years into adolescence, and it is performing better than ever. I have to say it, well done, Madam Director General. and we will have to accelerate your cloning processes. The spike in PESA's investments is an indication of the investors' newfound confidence in the Philippines. We have garnered distinction after distinction from various renowned institutions. Amongst them, the World Economic Forum, for example, bumped us 10 places higher in their latest competitiveness ranking. The Japan External Trade Organization and their survey of companies in Asia and Oceania also named us one of the best places to do business in Asia, 
whether in manufacturing or in service. And HSBC has even predicted that if we maintain our momentum, we will be the 16th largest world economy by 2050 and expect to be there. <coughs> and I hope that prediction does come true because I will be a very senior citizen by then. Furthermore, take a look at the stock market, which I understand is the fastest indicator of confidence as well as economic performance. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index has made the habit of breaking record highs. We have reached more record highs than we have months in office. I am told we have reached or breached 25 highs in less than 22 months, the latest just a few hours ago. Suffice it to say, I understand the eagerness of investors like you present here today to set up shop here, and I am encouraging all of you to expand further your operations. The Philippines remains open for business, and we want to continue working with excellent partners like you. I've always been an advocate of mutually beneficial partnerships between private institutions and our people, and companies like you reinforce my beliefs. You have given many of our people good, dignified jobs. I am told that nearly all PESA-registered companies not only hire Filipinos, but also train them for a number of months, if not years, to make them even more skilled workers. You don't just make sure they have jobs. You make sure that they have skills that will help them secure their futures. More than that, each job you create has a very positive multiplier effect. I understand that for each job created, another five jobs are indirectly created. This is the kind of impact you have on our economy. In the spirit of Filipino hospitality and true partnership, we are taking every measure to ensure that your stay here does indeed realize your expectations. We will make certain that the advantages you identified here will lead to more efficient businesses for all of you. After all, our partnership has never been about short-term gain. It's about long-term relationships. The Philippine electricity market is now in the process of improving access that is envisioned to stimulate competition, which will eventually, and hopefully not too long in the future, result in less expensive power supplies, especially for large end users of electricity. As you know, PESA offers significant fiscal and non-fiscal incentives to attract investors, but it is equally important to not merely attract investors, but to keep them here. This is the spirit in which PESA offers its services to your companies. Businesses here are now being given the opportunity to focus on their operations. PESA's officers are at your beck and call 24-7 and every day of the year, as the Director General mentioned, except for Good Friday. So I understand that I have company now in, this, in the only holiday we really expect in a year. I hope you allow them that one-day vacation out of a year. Filipinos are known to be a faithful lot. More than being, as was said earlier, a one-stop shop for your needs, PESA will be that non-stop shop. The red tape that has for so long encumbered your operations has now been turned into the red carpet. And beneath all this is the firm bedrock that has become the calling card of our administration. No under-the-table deals. No graft, no corruption, only hard work, service-oriented governance, and a level playing field for all who have come to invest. Progress is about helping each other. Our successes depend not just on our own personal situation, but also on the situations of others. If we can always consider the lot of others, then all of us will undoubtedly prosper. When a company has a good relationship with its employees and when it operates in an environment that allows it to grow, then it breeds a culture of success. It promotes a transfer of knowledge and resources between all the stakeholders and it increases the capabilities of all those involved. Let me give you an example. Just last week, I flew to Cebu City and I met with some of you to attend the World Electronics Forum. Over there, executives from the electronics industry talked extensively of the future of their industry in our country. And it was indeed enlightening, if not gratifying, to hear of their intention to expand the scope of electronics manufacturing in the Philippines 
and in fact to have more value added by having transferring rather the design of some of these items in the Philippines. Businesses have realized the creativity and skill of the workforce and are moving them up the value chain. From production line assemblies, they are tapping Filipinos for chip design and engineering. This is the result of companies nurturing their workforce. And in turn, that workforce is eager to learn and to propel its company towards even greater heights. Thus is the nature of partnerships, looking out for yourselves by looking out for your fellow man and creating a mutually beneficial cycle of trust and progress. This is the same spirit that has brought us together today. So I assure you, we do keep your interests in mind because we know that this redounds to the benefit of our people. We will continue fostering a business environment conducive to growth as this will ultimately lead to the prosperity of each and every Filipino under the broad light of day. We are rebuilding our country brick by brick and paving the path to equitable progress meter by steady meter. Tell your colleagues, tell your friends, and tell the world change has set in the Philippines. It is indeed more fun here. We are open for business and the road to our mutual prosperity is wide enough for anyone who would want to join. Let us all ride this momentum together. Again, thank you to each and everyone Congratulations on all your achievements and we wish you further success on this road we are traveling. Thank you and good night.